Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Your boy and host, The Real Sean 256. Welcome to another episode of Evening Crypto. And tonight, I want to keep things simple. I'm not going to do too much. I'm not going to really talk about the news. I'm just going to do a chart update. So if you guys are not into the TA, sorry, this video is not for you. But um, there is, I mean, there's there's no lack of, of news recently. I mean, there's been lots to talk about, uh, especially with um, Mark Zuckerberg and the Libra project trying to launch still. Um, we did see that recently Mr. Zuckerberg said that he will not launch Libra coin until the U.S. is on board with what they're trying to do. Um, so we'll see what that means. It's too early on, I think, to tell. So um, as I promised, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about the news. I'm just going to go into the charts, give you guys an update. I think we're overdue for four one. Uh, I haven't been able to produce as much content as I would like or as I had been in a recent past. Um, but, you know, there's there's some definite reasons behind that. But uh, I don't want to bore you with those details. But uh, let's go ahead and do a quick update of the market. Currently sitting at 269, almost 217 uh, for the um, entirety of the market cap. And then we're uh, down to about 59 billion for the last 24 hours recently we did see a, a, a bit of a sell-off recently so a lot of this volume here is is, is definitely coming from sellers uh selling into this market but but, but you know uh, um i'll prephrase this with um you know there's I, i'm not sounding the alarms uh although there was a significant sell-off today um not sounding the alarms not too worried about this and i'll tell you why so let's go ahead and get into it um, let's start with um, Mr. Bitcoin himself, and uh, let's start. A, let's start to digest what's been going on here lately. Um, so, a couple things to really get us um, started here. Um, Bitcoin has been trading between this range between the 377 and the uh, 200 EMA here. Uh, I mean, it's pretty clearly. I mean, you see a rejection there, a bounce here. Plenty of bounces off the 377 here, uh, and then another rejection off the 200, coming back down to retest the 377, and so on and so forth. Um, so we can definitely say that Bitcoin is definitely trading within this range, right? And if we bring our drawing tools back, uh, we also have a drawing. Let's actually get rid of these um, these guys here for just a second, so it clears things up a little bit more. Let's actually zoom in a little bit. And uh, we do see here sort of this this rising wedge formation that's also can be interpreted interpreted as a bear flag, right? So um, in the in the midterm um, outlook for the price of Bitcoin, I do think that uh, we are going to find a bounce here, as we have seen a bounce here, uh, you know, in the past once uh, this long wick here one two three four times now that uh, this area has been tested um so that tells us two things there's definitely definite support here coming in conjunction or confluence with the 377 on a rising trend uh and then we also have this uh, 200 ema coming in here also acting as resistance here uh and coming in confluence with not only the 200 but this line of resistance here uh between this point and this point has definitely been uh you know identified as the trend line here we also have the 0.5 coming in in confluence with that along with the 200 so there's going to be uh, a, a big hard ceiling within this range here uh, and a big hard bottom here within this range so i don't anticipate us going any further low uh, to, to say we're not quite ready in my mind in my eyes we're not quite ready to retest the 7200 dollars level we um, we should definitely have a bounce. And in fact, uh, I am putting my money where my mouth is, not financial advice. I'm just sharing again what I'm doing, in my opinions. I did already enter into a position here and I'm, you know, I'm going to long a Bitcoin here uh, till about, um, say, 8,500. Hopefully we get to that point. Um, but I, I, I can actually decide that, uh, you know, if we if I do see Bitcoin struggling here, uh, I'll, I'll probably make my first exit right around 80, 8,500 flat to about 8550 uh, and then ultimately you definitely want to get out 
at around 86.50, right? Um, I did have a, sort of a box here um, that I had drawn for you guys as the area for, say, um, for an area of um, for you guys to exit. And I'm not sure what happened to my box. I actually had to re reboot my computer and some of these drawings actually went away. So um, I don't know what happened to it. Um, but let's actually put a little flag up here around, say, 86.50. There we go. You know, if, if we, again, get back up and above 80, 8650 and start closing again some significant candles opening and closing there um, with a four hour or a higher time frame then we definitely start to again change our minds uh to tune it around and turn it around and and sort of you know start to get more uh more on the bullish case scenario here's our box again i'll leave that here for you guys uh, hopefully it won't go in and we can rid of, get, actually get rid of this guy here. Um, but yeah, this is this is the box where we are going to be looking for to, you know, to really start to change our minds, change our tune. It's 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 starting around 8650 and above again within this range here. If we start closing and op opening and closing some candles there, uh, then, you know, again, uh, that should be the catalyst that should send us to you know higher prices but uh we're the we're talking about the here and now which is right down beneath this uh and on top of this this rising support line here on the daily <clears throat> so again i although i do expect the bounce here there's something else to actually talk about so let's actually get rid of these um these drawings here and bring back our emas and here's really the big, big thing that, that um, also is coming in, and we definitely want to pay attention to it. There is definitely time to have a bounce here. And again, this is uh, I've, I've already put my money where my mouth is. I've already entered into a position down here. And I do think we're going to come back and retest at 200 or, or close to coming, coming close to, to retesting the 200 here. Um, and then before actually finding, a, you know, our way back down and actually breaking down below this range here below the 377 i think that move is definitely definitely something that is going to be inevitable and we've been calling that for for a while and again uh, i'll show you guys briefly the long term my long term um sort of analysis and, and opinion on where we are headed uh, if you've been following the channel you can actually go back a couple of uh, videos and uh and and look at our long trend long-term um outlook on on bitcoin and and you know what what we can expect uh on a more uh, in-depth um on a more in-depth sort of um sort of uh detail and uh but right now uh, i really want to focus on the here and now i will i, I guess i'll go ahead and touch upon the long term in, in just a minute here but the here and now again is is this here um although we are going to find a bounce and come back and retest the 200 here we do have the 55 remember the 55 and the 200 ema once this lower time frame ema crosses to the downside or crosses yeah crosses downward uh and uh, down below the 200 the longer term ema here once this 55 crosses down that is going to be you know the the big alarm right the 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 big warning sign that um, Bitcoin is definitely going to be, you know, breaking down below this formation, this sort of bear flag that we're in within this trend here, within this range, the 377 to 200, the 55 is going to be the catalyst for us to actually reach back down into, you know, mid 7,000s initially to low 7,000s, say around 7,200, right? Now, Although, again, I just said we're going to find a bounce, right? And I do actually want to bring my drawings here. I know it's going to look a little convoluted, but let's let's try to, to really uh, pay attention here. Again, finding a bounce here, coming back and retesting the 200 EMA here. But look, I mean, as long as price action is still within this range here, 
this 55 has to come back down and meet it, right? This 55 has to catch up to price action and, and, and actually get with where the price of Bitcoin is. Now, that, again, is going to allow the 55 to get underneath the 200 and, again, will be the catalyst for us to actually initially revisit 7,500. And then eventually, I, I, I do think we're going to see sort of, sort of a gradual but definitely steady pace downward into the 618 where we should initially find um, some uh, some buyers here and actually holding up the price uh, from actually reaching lower, right? So we are going to keep this here uh, as the number one indicator. Okay, things might actually change, and we 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 our assessment was actually wrong. This was not maybe even though again even though this is looking like a a bear flag overall, uh, it could still you know it, it doesn't mean that it has to 100% of the time break down. It could actually break out and uh and start closing and opening some candles here and then look uh, and then look for bitcoin to actually continue upwards to about 8900 to 9000 back back in those ranges again and then from there we'll reassess you know we, we we might break down below it or we we might actually continue the run but but this is the point where you know this is uh, point number one on the bullish scenario point number two on the bullish scenario and then we'll re reassess from there uh but again right now uh, we we should have the bounce. You guys, uh, I do feel comfortable entering into a trade at these ranges, longing it, and actually uh, exiting around 8,500. Okay, don't, don't don't try to get too greedy because again, this doesn't look too likely. I mean, we're again, we're just keeping it for reference, just in case this, this were to happen. But I don't think that's going to happen at all. Again, this is this is more look at look at the separation between it now. Uh, if we actually go back and and look, I mean, there was plenty of separation. Uh, that separation has been, um, you know, it's been pretty evident for a long time. And and so, I mean, going back, we can actually trace this, retrace this back to the last time these two guys had a cross right around here, April 30th. And I mean, once we got the uh, the, the golden cross. I mean, look at the price action, right? Um, so there's plenty of evidence here that that lets us know that you know once we get a golden cross, uh, it's things are good. But then let's go back and actually look at the time where we broke down below it. And uh, let's see here. And it's just it, it was just um, you know um, a very bad times for Bitcoin. So we did a little, get a little bit of a cross. And we actually got a cross right around here, um, May 17th, and we just kind of stayed below it. The 55 just stayed below it, found the bottom, and then turned it around here and actually had the uh, the golden cross back again in, in April. Um, so again, we this this seem this seems like the inevitable scenario, like the the you know Bitcoin's uh, is gearing up for the death cross in the on the daily. And uh, again, that could mean that we are going to revisit these prices, right, uh, at, at at the low 7,000s. And I did also see uh, a few traders kind of in, in kind of agreeing with that. So you know, it, it solidifies my thought process too. With that, uh, there's there's a few traders, uh, namely um, uh, Tone Vase. Um, I, I'm always, you know, I always listen to the guy with a grain of salt because, you know, we we, we all know um, we all know about Tom, Tone Vase. I don't need to tell you guys about him. Um, so, um, and, and a few other guys have, have, have also, you know, are in sort of confluence. Not the not the, not so much the Elliott Wave guys because those guys don't really look at EMAs. I don't think, at least the people that I follow, don't really look at these EMAs. Um, you know, they're, they're doing the, the wave count thing, but, but, um, you know, the way we do things here, uh, this, this again, seems like a, a very huge event that is coming up here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, this here should take, I don't know, it should take a few, a few more days, just depending on how long Bitcoin does decide to stay on this lower range. Um, this, this, uh, the 55 will, uh, will have a more dramatic downturn. Uh, adjustment into and, and try to catch up uh, into the, uh, the current price of Bitcoin, uh, which again that, that it could bring the move 
uh, sooner rather than later. If we do have a bounce, I do think unless we actually get above the 55 um, with the price action. So again, it, unless we get up to about 88.50 or above, then the 55, you know, uh, at the, at those levels, the 55 will will start to level out, and then if we could continue to move upward, then that that could be, um, you know, we could we could avoid a, a major downturn in the price of Bitcoin. All right, so, um, but that's that's really what's what I think is going to happen, right? So that's that's where my mind is, that's where my eye is, but there is definitely opportunity for this sort of scalp, if you will. Although I do think it might take a couple of days for, for, for us to actually bounce from this area, at least a couple of days into the weekend and actually try to reach back up into the, the 0.5 here or the 200 EMA here or this line of, of, of resistance, whatever you want to use. Um, it, it's all going to gonna serve well as a point of uh, for you guys to start de-risking as I will surely be doing the same thing. All right. So that is on the daily, lots of, lots of things to kind of think about, lots of things to really pay attention to uh, for the remainder of the week and into the weekend. Um, remember to stay safe with that and remember to always, you know, always do your, your, your due diligence. Um, another point I want to bring out is, you know, there's, there's just been a lot of, a lot of, uh, contradiction and just a lot of, um, misleading information and just confusing information uh, a lot of people with conflicting opinions on the price of bitcoin where we're headed some people are long some people are short some people are saying yeah we're, we're gonna we're definitely gonna break down some people are saying yeah we're about to break out this is the bottom the local bottom and and, and bitcoin's just gearing up for a blast off um you know and and, and continue to twenty thousand. Now, so so here's the thing right you're 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 hearing both sides, both postures, the bears and, and the bulls uh, talking it out or, or arguing about where we're heading, headed next. And the only way that I see for anyone to really have clarity in this in these markets when you have so many people talking on both sides of the aisle, if you will, um, on the bear case and the bullish case, you know, you, the the only way that you're going to be able to kind of weed out the, the crap, kind of um, decipher where we're going is to really, you know, buckle down and really start doing your own research, really start paying attention to the charts, really getting to know and really get intimate. Right. Uh, and, you know, I might you, you might think I'm getting a little corny here, but. You know, really get intimate with the chart. I mean, it, I can tell you, I do this exercise all the time. Is I'll, uh, you know, when I see people posting charts on Twitter, Facebook, wherever, I look at the chart, I look at the price action, and I can tell you, you know, this is this is either Bitcoin chart or this is this could be Litecoin, this could be Ethereum. I can tell them apart. I can tell, for example, that that. XRP and and Litecoin have sort of a similar, actually not Litecoin, but uh, XRP and, and uh, uh, BNB have sort of a, a, a correlation in the way that they've been moving lately. Um, Ethereum and Link and uh, Litecoin have sort of a, a, a confluence in the way that they're moving lately. Uh, and and uh, you know I can I can always tell some of these these apart, but I can definitely tell you. Uh, when Bitcoin, uh, when a uh, when a Bitcoin chart is posted, I can definitely tell you uh, it is the Bitcoin chart. So that's the kind of thing I'm talking about because that helps you kind of um, you know memorize some of these behaviors, um, kind of memorize. Okay, it's done this in the past. It it could mean this that that this is go going to likely happen, and then also things like you know the the three three black crows, you know uh, candle formations. Um, you know, when you have sort of like, you know, a hanging man or a spinning doji or, or uh, um, uh, call it a shooting star doji, you know, things like that. You know, um, Bitcoin lately has, you know, the, in this past um, drop, it um, did sort of paint a three black crow formation, as we do see here. Almost almost a textbook, right? This this one's a little longer. This one here is a little longer than we'd like it to be for, for a just a legit textbook. Uh, three three black crow 
um, sort of formation in, in the candlesticks. But look at that. I mean, it, it just has been doing that for several times. If you if you look at the chart on Bitcoin, uh, these things are, you know, good indicators that kind of tell you where things were going. I actually got out uh, right around here uh, earlier today, uh, thinking that things were looking a little weaker. And then we started to paint these two here and, it, and I started to gear up for for what was looking like maybe possibly a three black crow formation so i mean i got out, got out luckily a little early and started and started um you know going back in after i saw that um that you know we could find some potential bounces so i bought in here right around uh let's see 80 30, actually 80 40 is where i bought in um thinking that we were going to wick down and that was we were going to actually find a, an immediate bounce from there but we actually found a little bit more room which is we, I, I wasn't too upset with because again it's just more opportunity at these lower levels, right? At in the 7,900 level, um, and, and and we do see that Bitcoin is actually starting to, you know, we did run this three black rows. We actually painted four and four reds in a row, and now we are we are actually finding a bounce at these levels. So, uh, again, uh, to continue on that on that same topic, I do think we're going to find a bounce here and retest um, uh, 8,500. Now the 200 is coming in here. Again, on the four hour, this is the four hour now, not the daily. Uh, the 200 is coming in uh, again in in confluence, a little bit lower to be to be uh, precise, uh, around 8,500, lower 8,500 uh, range. So uh, again, on the four hour, if you're playing the four hour, that'll be a good area for you guys to start de-risking if you do enter along here or if you do enter a spot uh, trade on spot, um, and uh, and we'll see how Bitcoin actually works its way up. Right. Once you see Bitcoin uh, get above this range here around 8250 and start closing some four hours, that'll be the, the indicator. Right. That'll be the, the, the place where you're, you know, if you want to play it as a breakout, this will be a good point for you to, uh, to start looking for that breakout. And, and from that point forward, uh, up until this line of resistance, it's still a four and a quarter trade. So, I mean, it's not a bad even if you're just playing spot. From there it's not a bad place it's not a it's not a bad trade all right um so rsi is definitely looking like it's bottoming out uh i'm not i'm not uh again i don't look at the rsi as the only indicator or, or, or as a sure thing that we're going to find a bounce here but you know to be fair it is in the bear uh, it, it look it looks like it, it it bottomed it could bottom out here um we should find um we should find it if we can uh, maintain this level here at uh, what is it 7960 7950 or above I do think that this green line is actually going to start to turn around bottom out and start to turn around again it doesn't mean that we're we've definitely bottomed out and we, we there's no more room to the downside that it's not what that means it just means the momentum is pointing downward but again we're so far deep into the bear territory down here that that you know we should hopefully again um find the bottom here and start start really actually building on this bounce all right that's the four hour all right guys so that's that's pretty much all i have for bitcoin and let's actually look at link because link has been on an absolute just uh, absolute tear i mean look at this move here from this a pivot low here let's actually put a measurement on it just for fun just from this point here um, all the way to the top. We're, we're going to use the wick here. Um, you know, 23%. Uh, shoot, I actually went away from it quicker than I wanted to. Uh, so about 23%. It took 14, um, actually two days and eight hours, right? Uh, for that, for that uh, to culminate, and then we did, we did actually find the top, and uh, now we're we're having a, a a nice bounce off of this. What is it? Uh, the simple 200 looks like. Um, you know more more uh to be more accurate um now whether we are going to find a bounce here uh sure definitely we're, we're gonna we're definitely going to find a bounce Let, let's see if we can actually get above the 21 and the 30 here but i do think this might be the top for now this might be the local top for now um just the way it's looking um it, it and because again this coincides with bitcoin's price action where we did find a dip. We, we did find a big sell-off, and again, it's bringing the price of Link down. Because again, look, this was this was a pretty substantial move, right? Uh, if we actually go back and and measure from this uh, wick here, 
uh, all the way to the top, you know, it's it's total of almost 30 percent. Right. So, I mean, this this was a massive, massive move. Uh, I do think, again, it's looking pretty toppish as of right now. I, I think we do, we do need to close a few more four hours down in this area to actually officially call the the, the, the top of this. Uh, again, I do think we might find another another bounce here, but but I don't think we're going to quite get above this pivot here. Uh, I do think we are going to get rejected before that. Uh, but there is, I mean, there's there's certainly a trade to be made in there within this range here. Even, even if you enter here, I mean, the 30 simple is coming in. Uh, the 30 EMA is coming in here, or 30 simple, I'm sorry, it's coming in here. Um, could act as as, as some uh, uh, substantial resistance here. That's still a 4% trade. Uh, it's it's a high risk high risk trade for my taste. I don't think I want to enter here. Um, because again, I mean, one, two, three. Yeah, this isn't this isn't really. Uh, uh, I mean, the, the, I guess you could argue um, to say that this is a three black crow formation here with the three red candles here. But uh, I mean, they're, they're they're this one again is too long um, to to really quite call it that. Um, so. So the, the way to play it for me is, is I'm, I'm going to play it safe here with Link. I don't think I want to uh, try this out. Uh, you might enter a small position, a small um, uh, position here with Link uh, from the 21 to the 30. Uh, but I, I, again, uh, much higher than that, I'm not willing to play. Um, and, and, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure. Again, I, I, I want to see some volume um, uh, getting above the 21 here. Uh, before I am willing to commit a trade, uh, a, just a short scalp between the 21 and the 30. All right, that's that's kind of where where I would leave it at. Let's actually look at the daily, see what the daily is telling us. Yeah, I mean, look at this this uh, this looks like a uh, shooting star um, candle here, uh, which would indicate reversal on link, right? So. Um, yeah, I'm I'm definitely feeling like this this could be the the uh, local top, uh, and again, I mean this is look at this you know um, this would also coincide and kind of give us confirmation that this is the top. Um, we have a, a a high and then we have a, a, a lower high, right? So this could also definitely tell us that this run is over. We we could find a bounce. We it does look like it has more room to the downside. Um, and maybe quite we could we could uh, we could actually bottom out here um, at the same levels as this past pivot low here, or we could actually start painting a lower low here. But definitely looks like that that's the top on this run, uh, as this was the higher high. Uh, this is definitely the the lower high. And again, it, it looks like we're just starting to build this this lower high um, uh, trend here. Uh, and either a um, a triangle or a sort of a a bear flag here. All right. So um, again, is there a trade to be made uh, in the lower time frames? Absolutely. Uh, just sort of a, a high risk um, trade for my taste. I don't know if you let me know if you guys do decide to enter a trade and uh, what your strategy will be. So make sure you you are managing risk though. Um, um, make sure you do have a plan for, for an entry and an exit point and, and respect that stick to it. Uh, this, this actually, again, uh, I actually did enter into a short scalp on, on XRP, but left the trade or exited my trade a little bit early, a little bit early on this candle here. Uh, I did end, I, I did exit a little too early and then Bitcoin actually, uh, or not Bitcoin, but XRP actually, went all the way to 30377 all right 30377 was the high of this um too bad i exited a little bit too early um but again it's it's how you manage risk right i still was in a winning trade so i i can't really complain too much next time maybe i should be a little bit more patient but again um i did manage my risk quite efficiently and this also is looking like you know we could start to set some um, you know definitely a lower high from this point to this point and it could be that we start to round things off and start heading in a downward direction now one thing to mention um, ripple did lower the amount um, 
the amount that they sell and dump back into the market by about 75 percent that's a huge huge um decrease and a huge change for this past third third quarter um the ripple the company did inform the public that um they toned they, they tuned down the amount of, of xrp that they sell back into the otc market um and and only only sold about 60 60 million dollars worth of xrp in the last quarter so is this is this sort of move correlated to that i mean the argument could certainly be made because again when they typically you know before this last quarter this last third quarter um xrp the company was actually um selling about you know somewhere in 260 billion almost 300 billion in some cases back into the market and that was definitely causing a huge huge downward pressure on the price of ripple and uh the ripple community did get together um did sort of uh organize themselves and and really made uh, a, a lot of buzz around um you know a, even a possible fork um as as something that that could ultimately play out if ripple the company didn't stop massively selling back into the market uh every quarter so maybe there is some correlation there with with you know ripple the company actually tuning down the amount of uh, xrp being sold back into the market and we do see a, a positive reaction with uh, with xrp's price right uh, i mean it, it certainly looks like there is a correlation between the two and it's not i'm i'm not um you know, I'm not attributing this to the news. I'm attributing this to the fact that they sold less XRP. Therefore, there is less downward pressure on the price of XRP. And we do see it reflected here on the chart, right? So it's um, I'm going by facts and numbers, not by, you know, sentiment or news or anything like that. All right, guys. So one last one here, BNB. Um, you know, not not looking like really it's doing uh, very much. There's there's other things that are doing, you know, that are having more volatility. So therefore, there's better opportunity in trading. Uh, BNB is not one of those coins that that you know it's worth looking at, except for maybe scalp here and there. But you know, there's there's just other things. You know, Litecoin's looking like the same. Uh, there's just other things that are going to yield a much better opportunity. Uh, definitely looking like a head and shoulders formation here uh, in the medium time frame. We're looking at the four hour. Uh, this is ETH. Definitely looking like a like a uh, head and shoulders here. Sort of a you know, here's here's a shoulder. Here's a shorter. Here's the neckline here. Uh, sort of a, a tipped head and shoulders, but actually playing out nonetheless. So um, you know, is there more room downward? Uh, yeah, I don't know. It just depends on what Bitcoin does. I do think there's going to be a balance, so you might you might actually find a good uh, trade opportunity here with with uh, with um, Ether. All right. So again, let me know down below what you guys think. Uh, if you guys are trading, if you guys are using a, a certain strategy, love to hear it. Love to discuss. Uh, thanks for being here. Hopefully, you got something in exchange for your time here. I do appreciate your uh, attention. And also, if you got something out of this video, please remember to subscribe and hit the bell notification so you do get notified whenever I do put out these updates. All right, guys, it's been great. Uh, I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks so much. Your boy, The Real Shot, 256.